There are no prizes for knowing foreign agents, spies from many countries, are active in Australia. Most work in the shadows, but there's one group who seemingly don't care about secrecy. They're dark forces from Iran, and in defiance of our laws, they're doing all they can to silence anyone who speaks out about the oppressive regime. Put simply, if you dare criticise Iran, even on Australian soil, prepare for payback from these thug-like operatives. Hundreds of people say they've been targeted, and while our government is fully aware of what's going on, so far they've done very little to stop it. Tina Kordorostami used to think Australia was the safest country in the world. But one terrifying night last December, she found out she was wrong. It was about 10 p.m. at night time. And so my only focus was to head home. And I noticed that there was a big white van who was keeping very close to my car. And his driving was out of the ordinary. He wouldn't be that close to someone, usually. So you felt you were being followed? My gut instinct told me that it was not a normal situation. Tina had just left a community meeting of people condemning Iran's ruthless ruling regime. As she drove home through the streets of Sydney's inner west, she started to panic. As soon as I noticed, he was also turning left into the service station. I got very scared. So when you pulled in here, he followed you? He did. I could just see from the side of my eye, the corner of my eye, that he was following close by. He wanted you to know. Yeah. He was watching you. Yeah. And I realised, OK, I need to get into my car and just lock the doors and go on my way. He was already walking towards me. And unfortunately, the window was down on the passenger side. Mm. And that's when he leaned into the car and started talking to me in Persian. I responded in English by saying, I don't understand you, leave me alone. He finally gave up and said in English, doesn't matter anyways, because I know where you live. It was an unnerving threat, made even more frightening by Tina's belief it was delivered by an agent of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, a violent extremist military group. For decades, the IRGC has terrorised Iranians in Iran. But now it seems its fearsome operatives are active on Australian soil, determined to silence anyone who dares to criticise the regime. Did you ever imagine you'd be targeted here, in, in Sydney, in Australia? No. Even though it was so direct, so in my face, and so scary, I, I still went away from that experience thinking, but I'm in Australia, surely, surely that didn't happen. It's Claire O'Neill's job to keep Hello. Australia Hello. safe Hello. from Thank foreign you. interference. Thank you for your time today. And the Minister for Home Affairs knows she has her work cut out for her. How big is the problem? What is the scale of it? Foreign interference has replaced terrorism as the main domestic threat facing our country. It's a stunning declaration and an increasingly insurmountable task, confronting autocracies like China, Russia and Iran, countries going to extreme measures to undermine human rights and democracy on our shores. So what is the government doing about it? The government is really active on this issue and we are the first Australian government to impose sanctions on Iran. But I will be the first to say I think the Australian government can and must do more about it. It's little comfort for Tina Kordrastami. 
What happened to her is exactly the kind of intimidation her family was escaping when they fled Iran for Australia nearly 25 years ago. Tina now works for the National Disability Insurance Scheme, but is also a proud activist, fighting for the rights of those still trapped in her homeland. Last year, when 22-year-old Masa Amini died after being detained for wearing her headscarf incorrectly, Tina joined thousands around the world protesting, many cutting their hair, a symbol of defiance against Tehran. I have a voice that I can use, a voice that so many people in Iran will never have access to. I have resources. I have a platform. They see these comments too. And there's no shortage of people listening. But once Tina's determination to call out Tehran's oppressive leaders has attracted a huge social media following, especially in Iran. But as her voice has grown louder and her audience larger, she says the Revolutionary Guards have also taken notice, increasing their intimidation in person and online. We will find you. And that basically says we will be putting you in a body bag. I mean, that's a very specific, pretty terrifying threat. I think most people would be straight off social media forever. It doesn't deter you? We have gone too far now. There is no going back. Even in Australia, we're not safe. The IRGC is an extremely frightening organisation. When I was in prison, I had no idea who had arrested me, and it was only a few weeks after being in solitary confinement that I understood that it was the IRGC, and my blood literally ran cold. Um, it was the worst possible outcome for me, knowing that this was the group which had taken me hostage. If anyone knows the brutality of the Iranian government, it's academic Dr Kylie Moore Gilbert. Falsely accused of being a spy while on a research trip, she spent 804 days in prison in Iran under the control of the IRGC. They have no respect for human rights. They have no respect for the rule of law, for democratic principles. They will kill, will rape, will pillage, will violate human rights to the extent that they get what they want. Kylie was released in late 2020, but despite her freedom, she is still constantly targeted by Iran. It's extraordinarily concerning to think that the IRGC and other Iranian operatives are here on the ground in Australia or in cyberspace monitoring what Australian citizens are up to here in our own country. I think the real risk is that our democracy will be fundamentally undermined and what it means to live in Australia will be undermined. We expected to get submissions Last year, Liberal Senator agencies, Claire Chandler headed up a parliamentary inquiry into Iranian interference on Australian soil. They were at the very least being watched, um, but at the worst not safe. Mm -hmm. She says she was staggered by the response Absolutely. her committee received. Yeah. More than a thousand submissions from across the country stories of uh, individuals feeling that they were being um, watched when they were out in public attending rallies or feeling like um, that they were being followed home after work or being um, scouted in the workplace. People who had been harassed on social media in a very um, concentrated and purposeful way in an attempt, they thought, to uh, intimidate them from protesting against what was happening in Iran, even though they were protesting on Australian soil. It's extraordinary to think that these things have been happening in, in such a multicultural democracy as Australia. Sure, sure. And we wouldn't accept it from um, Australians here undertaking that sort of activity against fellow Australians, so why should we accept it when it's being undertaken by foreign regimes? Senator Chandler's committee urged swift action, that the government declare the IRGC a terrorist organisation and also immediately expel a number of dubious Iranian diplomats from Australia. 
But for some reason, the government has been slow to react. Um, in February, the Senate inquiry into this issue made 12 recommendations mm -hmm. to government. Mm -hmm. Why hasn't the government responded? The government uh, has will respond very shortly to the Senate inquiry. When you say very soon, I mean days, weeks, it was seven months ago. Yeah, it'll be very soon. Yeah. From his steely composure, you'd never know Simon Ronan is facing a daily barrage of death threats. They're not looking. After migrating to Sydney from Iran 10 years ago, Simon took up teaching martial arts to be active in the community and to stay strong physically and mentally. Unbelievably, it's his other job as a singer-songwriter that's made him the target of a ruthless foreign government. From his home in Sydney, Simon uses his freedom and his voice to call out Iran's leaders as terrorists, incurring the wrath of the country's radical Revolutionary Guard Corps. As an Iranian, uh, I see all this um, bad things is happening to my country and to my people. I can't really be indifferent about it. His music has struck a chord with a young generation of repressed but emboldened Iranians. Nearly half a million social media followers hang off his every word. Simon stays up through the night to communicate okay, with them. Uh, now it's 12 o'clock at night in Sydney and 5.30pm uh, in Iran and I'm going to go ahead and post my new video. And when he does, he's immediately inundated with grateful feedback from his fans. But amongst the messages of support is something far more sinister. OK, that one is actually says that uh, wherever you are, we're going to find you and we're going to break your neck. Sometimes I'm getting threads like, we know where you are. We are aware of where your family are. You're not safe. Don't, don't you think that you're in a safe uh, heaven, safe country? you got to stop what you're doing. Otherwise, we do whatever it takes to stop you. Are there ever days where you think it's too much of a gamble? These threats are too terrifying. There are a lot of times that I want to stop because it's scary. You know, you're dealing with... Um, an organisation, they are capable of doing anything. I feel um, the threat is imminent and I think we need to really do something about it. While the idea of a brutal foreign regime monitoring and intimidating Iranians living in a faraway democracy might sound ludicrous, Simon is not alone in being targeted. It's happening here every day. In fact, by the government's own admission, Foreign interference is now a greater threat to Australia than terrorism. And it's a similar story in Britain, where Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps seem to do whatever they want on foreign soil. I don't want to worry you, but you are under threat, actually. To be honest, you are. As news director of the biggest Persian news service in the world, Ali Asghar Ramazanpour should be in a bustling newsroom with his team of journalists. While they're in Washington DC preparing for the primetime bulletin, he's under police guard on the other side of the world. Why is the IRGC so worried about foreign-based news organisations like yours? What they want to do is stop every source of information for people inside Iran. Until earlier this year, Iran International was based in London, broadcasting into Iran and beyond. But when the news organisation freely and accurately covered last year's historic uprising following the death of Masa Amini, it became an enemy of the state. The IRGC threatened to kill journalists and members of their families back home. So they uh, said officially that they are going to uh, attack our office and our people um, everywhere uh, around the world, including here in London. The death threats escalated to the point where London's Metropolitan Police told Ali Asghar it couldn't ensure the safety of his staff or anyone else in the building and advised him 
to shut down the newsroom. The entire operation shifting to Washington, D.C. What was that like when you told the staff, everyone has to leave the building, we have to close our offices? It was a huge uh, nightmare for everyone and frustration for everyone because nobody knew that what's going to happen. It is astounding that a foreign state could cause such a threat to the British public on British soil. Yes, it is. I can describe it as a kind of working in war zone. Last month, Britain's Home Secretary described Iran as the biggest threat to the country's national security after foiling 15 plots by the rogue nation to kidnap or assassinate UK-based individuals. While the US and Canada have declared the IRGC a terrorist organisation, Britain has stopped short. And in Australia, Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill says our government can't, for legal reasons. Why won't the Australian government declare Iran's Revolutionary Guards as a terrorist group? Yep, so this is a, a really important question. Um, we have a terrorist regime in place that doesn't allow for the listing of arms of foreign governments to be listed as terrorist organisations. Because we're talking about a group that carries out kidnappings, assassinations, all yeah. sorts of acts of terror. I mean, you acknowledge they're terrorists. So Do you acknowledge they're a terrorist group? This, this organisation is an absolutely abhorrent organisation. It is not possible for the Australian government to list an arm of a foreign government as a terrorist organisation. Can you give any other commitment or, or promise to those communities today about what's going to change so that they can feel safe? Yeah. So what I would say is that uh, this is an urgent priority of the government. Using our security agencies here in Australia domestically on the ground all the way up to the things that the foreign minister does at a diplomatic level and make sure that we're using all those levers at the same time to put maximum pressure on the regime to stop it and to punish the individuals here in our country who are the perpetrators of these efforts. But it is still happening and people are still being followed and threatened. Mm. So yeah. it's not working? Yeah. So I, I, I wouldn't put it that way. I would say we've come to government without a an apparatus that really addresses this problem. And uh, we are building that and we're working on this. Uh, we've got Claire O'Neill says the government is considering really more sanctions against Iran. But Tina Cordrastami is fed up with waiting. And we need to keep up the momentum for the movement. As well. With the one year anniversary of Masa Rumini's death just a week away, Tina's busy organising more rallies against the regime that's pursuing and threatening her whatever the cost. People in Iran are wanting this to be the last movement against this regime. They are done. They want a change. We are seeing mothers come into the streets holding their daughters' hands without a scarf on. They are willing to put their lives at risk just to buy a loaf of bread because they have decided within themselves that they have had enough. They can't stop. We can't stop. And you won't be silenced? Never. Ever. We'll make sure of that. Hello, I'm Amelia Adams. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for our brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on ninenow.com.au and the Nine Now app.